I'm going to talk to you about a very important subject. Actually, it's the subject of rhythm and vibration. The, actually, the law of rhythm and vibration. I'm going to start talking about seven amazing um, laws, which I would call cosmic laws to tell you the truth. You might hear in the background some sounds of, um, it sounds like kids or something, but we've got a whole bunch of goats up here. Um, we have open space up here and um, every year they bring the goats to eat all the weeds. So you hear like 300 goats all day and all night going at it. Anyway, so if you hear something weird, that's what it is. So, the law of rhythm and vibration. Everything is always in motion. Even if you don't think it is, it is. Because everything is vibration. Everything is energy. And some things just vibrate faster than other things. And the less dense you are, the higher you vibrate. And the more dense you are, the slower you vibrate. Thus, these physical things that we see around us. But everything is always moving. Everything is ever changing. Tides. Tides go in and out. Okay? Um, vibrations are always going up and down. Um, so I like to refer to the pendulum, which I just happen to have one, of course. And even with the pendulum swing, when it swings to the left, it's going to equally swing to the right. So if it's only swinging a little bit, it only swings a little bit to the other side, but it will equally swing back and forth. If you get it really going, it'll swing equally back and forth. So I like to use this pendulum as um, some, a tool that we can talk about when it comes to our moods, when it comes to how we react or act or observe um, situations in our life. So one thing I know is, let's just imagine that we tend to live in a centered state. Now, maybe we don't, maybe we do, but that that's really what we want to go for is that centered state of being where it just feels peaceful and calm. But say that somebody comes along and starts kind of rocking your world um, and starting to get you a little bit upset and say you start having words and you start getting more upset and then you start both trying to go back and forth at each other so you see the pendulum it's getting more and more upset and then you really don't care so you just go crazy and you start screaming and yelling and throwing the biggest temper tantrum that you could ever have and pretty much that pendulum's going like this okay when you let it spin out of control like this when you allow it because you know what you might say that he made me do that or he made me feel that way nobody can make you anything you allow it okay yes it may be challenging maybe somebody is is making these feelings come up for you but you really have to look at yourself because what that person do is doing is mirroring in you some energy that is up for healing that needs to be looked at and addressed but many times people just project it back on the other person and blame always pointing out always pointing out but remember those three fingers are always pointing back at you so say your pendulum's really swinging because you just don't care and you're just letting loose whatever you want to say. You don't care if it's hurting somebody because at that moment, you, you're just thinking about how you feel. You could care less about what the other person feels and you might say hurtful things or you might just do some really crazy stuff. So your pendulum's swinging. So, okay, that happened like say last night and then say today, gosh, I just want peace. I don't want to feel bad. Do you think that your pendulum can just automatically stop and go back to center. Have you ever seen a pendulum go from this and then automatically stop? No. If your pendulum's swinging out, it's going to take time, and I call it the fallout. It's going to take time for that pendulum to slowly, 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 ever so slowly, so, so slowly make its way back down to centered and calm.
See how long it takes for this pendulum? It's still not. So it could take, depending on how much damage you do, how far you let yourself go, it will depend on how long that fallout's gonna take you to work through. Because now you've hurt feelings, now you've insulted people, now you've insulted yourself, now you feel horrible, now, or maybe you don't, maybe you're still mad, maybe you're still holding the grudge. So yeah, you went from this and then you calm down and then you think about it again and then the pendulum starts going again and then you might you know, go to sleep and, you know, start thinking about other things you'd like and then you, someone brings up that person's name and then your pendulum starts going again. And then it, you never find that state of peace because you keep going back to that resentment, that upset, that fear, that madness, that re, whatever it is that's keeping that pendulum moving. So my question to you, is it really worth it? Now, I can tell you an example that I had years ago. I was so mad at my sisters, and I don't remember why, and it was a family gathering, and I didn't care. I wasn't going, and I was uh, writing emails, really mad, just saying whatever I wanted to say. And you know what? I knew about this pendulum. I knew about how it would affect me, and I even said, I knew my pendulum was spinning out of control, and I did not give one crap, okay? And I was saying everything my little heart just desired. And I tell you, that fallout was horrible because that was my family. And it took, who knows, months. Then, to be honest, I don't even remember what I was so mad about. Thinking about it now, I have no clue. But I remember it because I remember the fallout it took months and months to repair. And is it really worth it? That's what I want to ask you. Is it really worth it? Okay, let's talk about fear. Say you have a fear. And once you start buying into fear, that fear starts growing and growing, and then you start feeding off that fear, then the fear is looking scarier and scarier, and what if this happened, and what if that happens, and worst case scenario, and oh my gosh, I don't know what to do, I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out, and you're, what you're doing is your pendulum is swinging bigger and bigger, and not only that, when you are in fear, and you're giving that fear up more and more, what you're doing is giving up your power, more and more you're losing your power. So that means the fear is easily taking over you because you don't even have the energy or power to ward it off. It's just eating and eating and eating away at you until it fully depletes you. And you know, what is it gonna take for you to finally snap out of that fear and, and start crawling out of that hole? And, and if you let that fear go to the point that you're feeling that you've dug yourself in the deepest well, that's when it's the hardest because when you do want to climb out, you're like climbing and you're climbing, you're climbing, you're trying to get up that well. And it's like you finally get to the top and somebody just kicks you right back down and you slam back down into the well and it takes forever to just continue to try to get up there. So buying into fear and letting it snowball is really not in your best interest. It just totally depletes you. It puts a block in your, in your path. It, anything that you've been manifesting, you might as well throw it out the window because you're not even holding the vibration to attract it anymore. And you've bought into this fear and hopefully you can crawl out of it. So the, the thing is, like, we are going to have fears and we are going to have upsets. But for you to, you know, think about it ahead of time and if these things happen, what are you going to do? You know, take a breath, relax, go outside, breathe. Do what you can. Talk to a, 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 a supportive friend. Not a friend that's going to help you buy into fear. Not a friend that's going to help you hate your friends and family and who, your neighbors. Not that kind of a friend. You want a friend that's centered and balanced and can help you see with a higher perspective so you don't go down that road. So all I want to say is remember, how far are you willing to let your pendulum spin out of control? Because the more you let it go, the longer your fallout's going to happen until you can get to a centered place. So think about it. Is it really worth it? Come up with a fail-safe plan of when I get fearful, I will do this. Or when I get super mad, I will do that. And just realize with people who, who just seem to cause you grief, do your best to realize that you don't know where they've come from in their lives or you don't understand maybe what it's like to walk in their shoes. And do yourself a favor, just don't buy into their drama. 
that's the best way to do it because people in drama want you in their drama because they you know having people in your drama is a lot more fun than being in drama by yourself it's really boring and you just really pissed off about everybody that's happy so your best solution for people who want to start crap with you is just don't buy into their drama because you know what it really isn't worth the pendulum swinging full swing it really isn't so find your center find the people in your life that are supportive of you but in a healthy way not people that want to support your madness and anger somebody who's going to help you with a higher perspective and to see people and situations through the eyes of love and when you see people and situations through the eyes of love what are you doing you're seeing them through the eyes of God because God is pure love and when you start seeing people through the eyes of love you have a lot more compassion and understanding for them so stop pointing fingers at people and saying what they're doing wrong you know what they're doing the best they can and what you need to do is do the best you can and not get in their drama if you get in your drama then you have only you to blame for it how much are you willing to allow things around you to move your pendulum so big that it moves you out of your your, your alignment with your manifestations. To me, it's not worth it. Plain and simple, it's not worth it. So anyway, hopefully you've got something out of this, and I'm going to be talking about these cosmic principles in the next day, and I hope that they really offer you some insight. Okay, everybody, have a great day. See ya tomorrow. Hey, everybody, I just wanted to say, I just made the most powerful, detoxifying, beautifying elixir green drink that's red and I know it's gonna be a little bit tough but this drink is going to rock my organs world with um, cleansing and detoxifying so here we go a whole bunch of dandelions a whole bunch of cilantro celery cucumber red beets and uh, ginger lemon and peaches because nobody at the farmers market had apples so it's going to be an interesting one but you know what i'm going to happily drink this because this this one is healthy for you look at that Whoa, this is one you're not going to really want to taste and savor. It's not that bad, but definitely tastes like dandelions. Anyway, here's to your health. Cheers. I hope you make a delicious, delicious, well, let's just say a nutritious concoction for your body soon. See you later.